40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. Okay, we looks like we are now online. Hello and welcome to the stream. Okay, so previously I've been playing around with this a little bit and um, off stream. And it turns out I really couldn't find a good way to make text small and these images really big. Uh, text apparently appears to be a fixed size. Not happy about it. Um, but that appears to be the way it is. And uh, converting to image, as always, failed miserably. Wow, I've got a lot of boxes here. I'm just going to do a reload, I think. Page reload. And that does mean I'll have to do home user bc git mathix and whatever it was. <coughs> That's not. Um, let's see. I know I had Emacs around here somewhere, and then why did I... Oh, no, there it is. No, that's the X term. Hang on. We will find Emacs, and we will find why it was not properly anchored so that it can show up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to basically, um, once I get this back and running, we're basically going to just uh, increase the size of everything else. This is a terrible way of doing things. I, I am not happy with it. Um, I wonder if that's enough to do a cut and paste, what I just did. Um, no, it's not. Okay. And maybe I'll move this a little bit over here. And this. So it, there, are, there is something called an inset box, which I thought would be really useful, but it's just a function that, that doesn't work, basically. It's documented, and it doesn't work. Um, oh, am I already in a mini buffer? Okay, hang on, I'm doing something wrong. Maybe that's why I had to move this up a little bit. Yeah, okay, so this is why. So we're going to make this one the one that goes here. This one the one that goes here. Emacs is going to be highest up because they need it for the... has the greatest length, I guess. Okay. Now, why am I switching to my own... Oh, wow, I can't even do that. Uh, bummer name. No, buffer name. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to basically uh, cut and paste this here. Pff, fucking hell. BC Eclipse Diagram. Um, but apparently I can't do that, and I thought I'd done something clever like that before. Again, we're just going to go ahead and say BC Eclipse Portions.Mathix. Is that the one we want? Mm. I don't think so, actually. BC Eclipse Diagram is the one we want. Um, again, vaguely unhappy with the fact... Whoa, 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 whoa! So where is this? Hub user BC get Mathix BC Eclipse Diagram Mathix. Yes, and if I spelled it right, it sometimes works better. Sadly, not always. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to rescale everything so the text size, which apparently cannot be changed, will be correct. So this is very ugly. I don't like it. Um, and the way to sort of do this without messing up too much of other stuff, I'm going to call this a scale va va variable here. And I think Mathix will allow me to do this. So this will scale everything up by 100. And the cool thing is all the other numbers are computed, so they should scale up automatically, by which I mean they will not scale up automatically. Okay. Okay, I'm sort of impressed, actually. Um, okay, well, let me... Um, let me bring all that stuff in, and this time we're going to be doing a Eclipse Diagram. And some of it's going to complain that I can't do it because it's trying to can't show graphics from here. EX, not bad. EY, EZ. No, ER, rather. Okay. So I'm semi-impressed that worked at all. Um, uh, we now need to change the... Uh, we're still not quite there yet. We want the... Um, I think I want the text to be a little bit smaller, but right now we also need to expand the, the, the height of this. 
which I don't know why we, uh, do we have an image? Oh, we did have an image size. We were playing around with it. And um, I'm going to try not playing around with it. See what happens. Because they, they actually did a pretty good job by default. Like that. Um, and I'm curious what kind of dimensions they're using here. I mean, it looks like a 4 by 3 So you would think like something like image size to 400. This might be the default too. And if this isn't, there's another way, to, there's a clever way we can do this to see what the dimensions actually are. Um, okay. That actually looks pretty good. I like that. Um, let's see if we make it a little bit bigger. 800 by 600. For some reason when I do that, though, I think the scale gets thrown off. Uh, which it shouldn't, but... Hey, that's gorgeous. <coughs> I really like that. Uh, except for the fact that I'm not happy with the text size right now. The text size is still a little bit too big for me. Um, so let's see if we can uh, we can shrink that down a little bit, by which I mean increase everything else a little bit. Um, and yeah, let's see what we can do here. It's it's close. I mean, it, it's close. I like it. It's not you know it's not hideous. Let's see if what 200 does. Unfortunately, I think this is going to break the. Um, unfortunately, I think this is going to break the uh, circularity of it. See, that's not supposed to happen um, because these are supposed to be perfect circles. They're not supposed to change like this when I do that. Um, so there's something inherently weird about the uh, the way they're doing these image image sizings. So let's see if 800 by 300 works. And it might just be that the text that's doing all that, because that's the one thing that doesn't change size. Okay, we need to stretch this out a little bit. Am I going to live with this for the uh, size of the... Um, yeah, it's still a little bit on the big side. Let me see if I can make it even smaller. By making everything else bigger. Okay. What I liked about that is it actually kind of fixed the circle problem. Um, let's live with this, I say dangerously. Um, and maybe I could give it a plot range that's a little bit bigger than, uh, than, because right now it's just skimming, the, the background is just skimming the, the earth and the sun. Wow. Um, so maybe... Uh, this is a very, this is a crapshoot. Plot range, well, let's just see if it even accepts plot range. Um, 0 to 1, 0 to 1. This will not do what we want at all, but it will demonstrate whether or not plot range works. It does. Or if it, if, or if it doesn't, we don't, you know, whatever. So the leftmost, th the leftmost quantity is going to be SX. The rightmost quantity is going to be, um, what is the rightmost quantity going to be? Uh, EX, MX, beyond EX, TVAL, uh, cone point 1 is actually the rightmost X value. And we're going to go a little bit beyond this force. The uh, lowest Y value, I'm pretty sure, is going to be the Earth because we have it sort of down a little bit. Um, so EY minus ER. And I think we can make this a separate little thing here. Okay. Did I call the cone point up? I did, I did this cone point. Um, and the highest value is going to be, I think, the sun, um, the sun's y plus the sun's r. That's y plus sr. So if this works, I've, I, got, I sort of get back to where I used to be. And that did not work. Okay, gasp, what went wrong? Um, well, let's see, SX. Okay, um, that should actually be SX minus SR because that's going to go further to the left. Uh, okay, let's see if this helps. Yeah. 
It's also quite possible that it just doesn't accept uh, plot range. Um, EY minus ER, which should be, let's see. Yes, that should be the lowest. Um, so cone point one needs to be bigger than that. But I think it is. And let's just put them all in there now. SY plus SR. So this will be 0 to 60 minus 16.5 to 9. And that certainly should include everything, even with the one that has a multiplier. But 300 multiplier, actually. Um, let's spend a couple of more seconds trying to get this correct. Um, we can also just try a plot range of the x value. It should automatically figure out the, um, the y value. So plot range to this. And that should just, if I do that, it should just be the x value that gets plot ranged. Um, no. So maybe I better look up plot range in our magical little documentation that is so bad that probably no documentation would be better. Oh, there is no plot range. Or do I have to actually, is this case sensitive? Oh, you can't follow plot range by one of those. It's right, it's plot range er arrow, it's like this. Plot range, come on. I'm on page 114. Huh. Um, that actually kind of looks correct. Unless I'm seeing something, so minus 2, 1.5, to minus 1, 1.5. So, oh, you know what, that might be x and y ranges, so I, I probably did do that wrong. Let's see if we can correct this now. Um, so it's going to be the x range first. The x range will be sx minus sr, uh, cone point 1, and we're going to add a little bit of a, a, a gap to that, but let's just see if this helps and gives us the correct x range. Yep, didn't like it. Um, it might be that it requires... Oh, 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 oh. Let's see, hang on. Plot range... This. Then close up. Oh, okay, so I was off by a... by a... by a parenthesis of sorts. Still not happy. Let's see if I can unbreak it by getting rid of the plot range, because if I've broken it, I need to worry. I don't think I've been, I don't think I even BC get saved this. So quickly, let's make see if I have unbroken it. If I do, I'm gonna go ahead and BC get save this. Yeah, okay, let me go ahead and quickly save this before I forget. BC get save means I'm gonna push it to git. Uh, it's just an alias I use called BC git to do that, but it has to run on my main machine so you can't see what I'm doing. Um, there's a comma. It has to run on my machine, comma, so you can't see what I'm doing. It's not that I don't want you to see what I'm doing. Um, it's just that because it has stuff in it, we can't do it that way. Okay, so now... Okay, now we have to watch off capitalization here. Plot range, okay. Um, so we're going to say SX minus SR for the leftmost coordinate. And comp one for the rightmost. And let's see if that works, and if it doesn't, we might have to give both x and y at the same time. Even though in Mathematica, you do not. Well, apparently here you do. So, plot range. And it's going to be ey minus er. And the topmost is going to be sy plus sr. So, if that doesn't work, I will be unsurprised, but I mean, at least it'll be, hey, 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 there it is. 
Okay, so now we want to poof it up a little bit on top of the, give it a little bit of buffering um, to go, for the extremes you want to go both to the left and the right of the sun and to the right of the, uh, the umbral point, the, the where the cone meets, uh, all of which we have to draw in, by the way. Uh, let's see here, so we're going to say uh, SX minus SR. Um, so we said scale is 300. If we put a minus scale over here, that's going to go too far. But let's let's take a quick look at this just to see what it just see how it, what it does. And when I say that's way too much, so let's say scale over. Let's over here actually say padding equals scale over a hundred and that way I don't have to keep changing this every time so minus padding and if we really wanted to we could make separate X and Y padding but I think we're going to be okay with this so let's just quickly do this and that gives us a nice little bit of padding there on the X side let's go ahead and get the same on the Y side if we need to we can make it um, we can make them separate but for right now I think I'm going to be happy with equal padding Yep, and every time I do that, it's going to mess up the um, it's going to mess up <laughs> the circleness of this all. Um, so I'm kind of tempted to see. See, there's a special command here that that actually does work called to boxes. Um, and what this will do is show me a little bit about G3, if I were to spell it correctly this okay so this tells me a little bit about um, inset box hello see this is an inset box um, but for some reason you can't really do much else with it image size blah 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 automatic ticks uh, so we could put it we could put an axis in here we're not going to but we could now if I don't do an image size I just wonder if it's going to choose one for me and if I could somehow get it back without having to um, without having, you know, it'll just tell me what the natural image size it thinks it should be. Uh, well of course, I could always do a capture, or I could do a you know, pixel measurement or something weird like that. Um, plot range, labels. Oh, no, I need to redo this one. Um, see, image size to automatic, which is uh, kind of annoying, because I don't know what that, what that makes it equal to. Uh, I'm tempted to say image size to two times automatic. I'm going to bet you that that's not going to really work, though. Because I'm pretty sure that image size to automatic is much more fancy than what I'm doing here. Yeah, no way that was going to work. Um, so I guess we're just going to live with it at small size for right now. Let me try something here. Um, this is a total hack, but let's see if we can use the Oh, whoa, whoa, plus. Oh, uh, you know what? I don't even... Am I getting pixelization? Whoa. I'm not even sure I'm getting pixelization here because, uh, because this is an SVG image, so um, that's kind of cool, actually. Okay, so let's start naming our points now. Um, I want to be a little bit careful. Um... Hmm. So obviously the hello is going to go away. That's just there for for stand hold hold point right now. Uh, okay, so I'd like to give these things all like one letter names, and I'm tempted. To, like this would be S T U M N P. We don't want to use O as a point. This could be O because it is really the origin, kind of. Um, E F G. Am I okay with that? I might be okay with that actually. Alright. So now I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this back down to the one hundred percent size. We only use the, the huge size when we actually need it. We don't need this anymore. When we need it meaning when we want to do a screen capture or something. Um, so we can use it for the final program. 
Alrighty, so let me go ahead and quickly save this because I get, uh, I really should be saving more often. Uh, which I do, I save constantly when I'm doing it on my own machine. This I forget because I do have to switch to another machine to, to, to do this. Okay, um, so now we're going to put, um, we're going to put, uh, you know, basically text where we need it. The center of the sun is going to be S, and I'm going to bet you anything this isn't going to work, but we need to figure this, we need to look at this to see why. It's going to be that it's going to be like right on top of it or something, something really bad. Um, I'm actually okay with that, I think. Not quite. There's something called text position that I saw here, which I don't know if it actually does anything, but it is a um, text position. And this, again, might be one of those things that is uh, is documented, but text cases, text position. Um, oh, no, text position doesn't really do that. It has nothing to do with... Um, Okay, so now, normally, let me see something here real quick. Do I have a, like a thick, I have a thick going over here. If I do a thin here, this will probably make things worse, but let me want to see if the, uh, the directive makes sense. It's amazing that it actually retroactively applies to everything. Which again shows you that this is not really doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, so I don't need a thick there, obviously I already have one. Now if I get rid of this thick, everything should show up at normal size. Um, which I don't think would be helpful. Huh. That didn't appear any different than it was before. Alright, we'll try thick again. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, I'm beginning to wonder if even with even with this shrinkage, I've got um, even with expanding these out, I'm worried that the because um, putting in, putting a letter here is going to be really really tiny. Uh, and I'm also wondering if this is actually what I kind of want to do. Uh, this is a really, really sort of tight, uh, tight setup of these things. Um, it's also, I mean, there's no way we're going to get realistic, but I mean, the the diameters are way off, but also the uh, the distances are way off. Uh, we're never going to fix that 100 percent. But I think we can maybe be more realistic about this. Um, and maybe we could actually make it, uh, you know, like Jupiter. Well, shoot, do I want to do that? Jupiter. Maybe we can make it like a lunar eclipse. The sun, um, the sun's umbra is, hmm. All right, maybe not. We can, um, I get, uh, man, see if we put this S over here, that's going to be way too big. Unless we make the moon bigger, then we might as well make the whole damn thing bigger then. That makes scale equal to 500. Oh, that did nothing at all. Make it a thousand. Let's see, screw with that. That's not cool. Just, is it that doesn't even care to plot range? Does setting this plot range like automatically fix how where everything's going to be? How big everything's going to be? Um. If that's the case, can we go back to scale equals one? It's kind of getting on my nerves now. Um, BC eclipse diagram.
I somehow get the feeling it's not reading it correctly. Okay, apparently, if you set a um, a plot range, you fix all of your other problems magically somehow. That's just wild. Which also means you still can't change the size of the text. Um, that's strange, actually. That means... Ah, oh man. So that means the size of the text is based on... Okay, well now let me see if I can mess with this and do image size. Let's go crazy. Let's go crazy, crazy. Little little singing there for you. Okay, and now again we have this uh, extreme ugliness. I I don't understand, Captain. Is it 1024? I'm trying to figure out what the default size is here. No, you know what? Maybe this is a, a pointless exercise. I mean, more so than... More so than everything else. Alright. One thousand twenty four by five twelve. I I don't think this is gonna this is gonna be productive. Yeah. Screw it, we're gonna leave the image size however it wants it. And for some magical reason by setting a plot range, we have fixed the size of the text to be exactly the wrong thing. Okay. Seems something, something weird about that, though. It seems like thick yellow circle. Eh, maybe that's what that does. Setting the plot range. Um, changes things somehow. Um, now this is probably not going to work. This is going to put it to the north, the southeast corner of the thing, but it's going to go too far because it's the same as our padding. Yeah. So. So, and I think again, I don't like the size of our. Um, I don't really like the size of, of our our moon is too small here. Um, and things are sort of too cluttered up. So I'm going to go crazy here and do the actual sizes. I mean, you know, roughly speaking. Um, and it's going to be horrible. So, you know, SX, SY, SR. So we're going to put the, um, I guess scale doesn't really matter now. Uh, we're going to put the sun here and its radius is like, um, actually, Playground tells us what its radius is. Um, 696,000. We're going to shrink that down to 696. Um, so we're still not doing s the size and distances to scale, but we are doing each one individually. And the so EX, EY, ER equals um, the sun is 93 million miles away, same plane uh, with a radius of uh, 7, uh, 6.4, let's say. Yeah, we're never going to be able to see any of this stuff. And the moon is less than a million miles away from the Earth. Actually, quite a bit less. So we'll say 93.2. Kiss FM. But radio stations can only end in odd numbers. Um, so that wouldn't work. And the moon, we're going to align it for right now, just to see the sizing. Um, but, but of course, the moon is the thing that can be disaligned from these two. Or if we're using a solar eclipse, the Earth is the thing to be disclined from these two. Um, and then we're going to say... 1.7, let's say. So I'm sort of curious to see what this will do. Break. It'll, it'll break. Cool. Um, so I'd like that, actually. Um... So padding of a hundredth, the plot range, SX minus SR minus padding, um, I 
And I guess this, in this case, we actually do need to flip these around. We'll, we'll make this 92.8. Um, it has to be on the other side of the Earth, but this, I can't imagine that's going to affect this, because this is just sort of crazy. Um, alrighty, and our plot range was... SX minus SR minus padding. Which is... negative... Let's just actually do this. you like it, put an N in front of it. That'll give us floating point approximations. Okay, so the leftmost is minus 696. Um, and the rightmost is going to be comp 1 plus padding. That's what that is. Oh, I need to put a endless there. SX, oh I'm sorry, I needed to do, this is, this is the list, and that's the, uh, to 93. And I'm pretty sure that's the, um, unless I've made the sun so, oh yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what's wrong. I made the sun bigger, the sun's, uh, radius bigger than the, um, because I'm not scaling correctly. So this really needs to be 696 over 1,000. Now we're not going to be able to see them at all. But they're not going to do this horrible thing to each other either. So. Okay, that's not supposed to happen. Oh, uh, have I actually made it now so they're totally invisible? Let me go ahead and bump them up by 10 times their actual size. Okay. Um, still way too small. And, yeah, but we are trying to see what we need here. Uh, let's go ahead and make them 100... 100 times their, their real size might be too much now. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, as much as I hate to say it, I think we have to use the original numbers that we had here. Um, um, and we'll use a text padding that's a fourth of that, so this should look something like we had before. That's oh I'm not using the text padding, I just defined it, I didn't actually use it. Okay. This is a really bad diagram. I kind of wanna go onto a sketch pad and make make a better one. Um I don't think I can do it on GeoGebra. Although I do have that up, I think. I do have that up actually, right here. Um, and this is kind of cool, but let's see. Um, I don't think this lets you drag around the spheres or anything, so we can't really get an idea of what's going on here. So let's see. All right, let me make some. Uh, let me make some. Uh, some interesting thoughts here. Um, let's get the moon further away from the sun. Let's get the Earth way, way to the right of where it is now. So uh, we're going to say the uh, EX value is going to be like 0.35. Um, yes, it would be nice if the plot range went far enough to, to catch that. Um, and we're going to make the moon further away too. So why is this plot range equals uh, s cone point one plus padding? It's actually going to be the max of the um, 
We actually need to figure out what the max, the most right thing is going to be on this, but let's for right now just do this. Okay. So let's move the moon a little, and let's move the earth up. Um, I think there's a reason I did this though, so the earth wouldn't be up. And now, of course, we're getting problems with the, um, with the, um, the lettering being too big. So I think I might just give up on using Mathix to draw this diagram uh, and then just use something else. And the question is, what can I use that's, that's fairly... D I mean, Dia comes to mind almost immediately uh, for doing this sort of thing. And Dia is nice because you can actually move objects around once you've, uh, once you've uh, declared them. Let me see if I have Dia installed here. I should. I do. So, unfortunately, I'm, I'm not really that good with Dia, so this is going to be kind of ugly. But let's see what's going on here. Let's see if we can do this. And Dia is actually for diagrams, not for not for drawings. And there is a difference. Okay, so let's... Um, so, somewhere i got to add Dia to the, the things that the stream will not teach you. Um, okay, let's put this over here. Give it a little bit there. Um... I just want to draw a circle. Oh, in some, if you hold down, oh, okay. In some problems, if you hold down like the shift key, it'll insist that the circle be, um, it'll keep the circle uh, circular. It won't make it, it won't let you draw an ellipse. That's nice. Um, how do I move the darn thing? Oh, here we are. And do I want a grid? I think I do actually. Um, so this point here, yeah, I'm a little bit confused here. If I do this, call this point T. Yeah, I don't see. This is this is not what I want exactly. I need to delete that. Now there's a way to do all this magical stuff here: flowchart properties, lips, line width, line color, fill color. Draw background, line style, all oh, this is good stuff. This is all really good stuff. Um, but the question is, can I actually label this, this anchor point here? Because that's really what I want to. And also, can I force this thing to be? Oh, here, no, yeah, that doesn't work either. Can't really force this thing to be circular either. It's just, I mean, I can, I can approximate. Um, so drawing diagrams is something I'm really not good at. Um, can I spin this? No, I cannot. So I'll delete that. Um, Xfig is another program that I might have that lets me do this. Um, wow. Um, oh wow, that is just really nice. And I think in this case you do, by get default, get a, cir uh, get a circle. Okay. Nope, don't want that. <laughs> okay. Well, these all and of course there's a, there's GIMP, which is fantastic, but uh, really quite impossible to use. And now, how do I actually? Uh, um. This is really sophisticated. I'm thinking because I don't know what the hell's going on. Um, so what I want to do is grid lines. Yes. Oh, shiny. Can I move this to, um, okay. So how do I now measure the area, drawing, editing, um, open compound object, scale objects, Chop objects. Uh, how do you uh, delete objects? Delete you. Delete you. And you, I like. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move you around. Um, copy. Add point. Move. Move object. You get to be moved here. It'd be nice to see like some. Oh no 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 no. You go moved here. Stay. Good object. 
Um, and let's see if we can, um, can we? Oh, actually, that's point posh. We don't really want that. Sorry. Grids. Can we make it so it's, um, yeah, we can't make it so that some of the lines are darker than the others. That's shiny. Um, let's do this. I don't think we have snap to grid. Oh, I think we can do that, though, actually. So this would be the, uh, the, uh, the sun. And... Call this... Oh, actually, we need to do little points, though. I need to actually do a little tiny, um... Circle ellipse. Circle ellipse. Specify diameters. Spline, blah. Spline with interpolation. Image. Text. Um, free, is there a freehand? Um, or I'm going to have to make basically a, uh, that's going to be a pain in the ass. And so if I wanted to, I could now fill this probably, but that's uh, getting ugly already. Um, let's see if there's anyone in the audience. Uh, not really. So... <sighs> all this for, uh... For a simple, uh... For a simple diagram to explain what it is we're actually doing with all this stuff. I do not want to save this object. Ooh, segmentation fault. That's never good. So give me a sec here. I'm going to try to see if there's any other uh, drawing programs that I know of that I use. I don't think there are. I, um, TGIF and XPaint. And XPaint, I'm pretty sure, sucks. I don't even have it. TGIF I don't have either. I could probably get it. I don't necessarily want it. Um, uh, well, we could always go online, which I'm not crazy about. But since we're recording this whole thing, we will always have a record of whatever it is that we're... Um, doing. I mean, we will never lose it. We can always reverse back to any point where it's good. Uh, lucid chart. Um, yeah, this sounds a little, this sounds a little bit like it's too fancy. That's a good start. Okay, now how do we get rid of this stupid, uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's that's gonna be nice. Um, so this isn't too bad, and then we can give it a little sort of point in the middle, can we? No, we can't. And I kind of get the feeling that uh, nothing's gonna beat the Mathematica anyway. So let's go back over here. And I'm almost questioning my decision of using um, black as the background. So let's see, that's S, but again, see the, the freaking size there is just going to kill me. So what if I do this without a plot range? Uh, this is going to give me a little bit of an error because I have a null at the end, but that shouldn't stop it from drawing something. Uh, no, it does stop it from drawing something in entirely. Let's try this now. So apparently specifying the plot range. <sighs> Going in circles here. Um, I'm going to make the sun's radius bigger, but something tells me that... Um, that we're kind of stuck here. Now another option is to make the... Um, just use the points colors as their names, but that is really ugly and we might run out of colors. So that's not necessarily a good thing. So let me see what happens if I increase the sun's radius only. Um, by a huge amount. Let's see what that does. Um, 
Well, the S is now at a much more reasonable size, uh, although we're not no longer um, we, we can no longer see the bottom of the sun, which I probably we, we might actually be okay with that. So let's move the moon way to the right and the Earth to the right as well. So let's move the moon all the way to um, and the Earth will become 0.55. I think there's a problem with this, but let's see what happens. Oh, man, the moon has become tiny. Let's make the moon's radius a lot bigger. Ten times bigger. Actually, I think it'll make the same size as the sun, which is what we don't want. Huh, 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 huh. Oh, yeah, that's actually going to be exactly the same size as the sun, which isn't going to work because then you actually, there's the TD will never be found. Okay, so that's not bad looking if I could get the, um, the moon. I mean, those are, those are decent sizes. And then the Earth is going to be, let's bump the moon down a little bit. And the Earth needs to be bigger than the moon, so it's going to be 0.1 but it also needs to be quite a bit further now. Let's see what this does. Um, yeah, and the crap is going to be here that we're never going to get the, uh, the letter size to be correct. The moon, if it make it bigger, um, yeah, we're kind of screwed here. So, Now we could use Fly. Fly is a nice program that lets you create um, pictures using libgd, images using libgd. Um, I can't really use real Mathematica here because I don't have that. I could use it somewhere else. Um, let's make the moon's radius... Yes, even... It has to be near these. Let's see, the moon's radius is 0 0.05 and that is... Um, let's make this point oh eight maybe. And I also get the feeling I'm wasting time now because it's, I mean, even for me, uh, because we're not really getting anything done here. Um, so see if I put an M there, it's still going to be too big. Uh, and if I make the sun even bigger, I get the feeling that we're just going to lose everything on scale. Um, so the problem is that the text is not scaling properly. Actually, that's not too bad. Um, so now we make the moon bigger. And we need to put it further away too, but uh, that might work. That might work. But if we move the moon further away, I bet anything that we're going to get... Um, that the, the font size is going to change again on us. Yeah, and to do that we probably have to make the Earth even further away. Um, and that's just because that's where our bounding box is drawn. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm not happy with the uh, the way we can print this diagram out. And I really want to do that so we can understand what all the values are in our... Uh, in our... something. In our uh, NRC program, what all the values are and what we're measuring and even with vectors and arrows and stuff. Um, I wonder if I can label arrows. If I, that's still not going to help though, because they still need to uh, label points. Uh, let me see if there's a label option here. I don't think there will be. And so label broken. Um, developing classes. Oh, that's actually for something else. Label. Do we have a label? 
Oh, hang on, we do. Label style. So is that something we can actually set? Or only something that comes out? No, see, this is just what two boxes spits out. Label style. Label style. Uh, yeah. So apparently if you do anything except label style to nothing, uh, we can't seem to do... Oh, hang on. Nope. Still zero. Still nothing. Point size, which is not doesn't really do what we think. And I'm pretty sure there's not even a label. Yeah. So we're kind of stuck here. I'm trying to see if there's a way we can make the uh, best. Let's see if we can get. Um, I mean, we could try drawing the S out of uh, out of base characters or something, but that's going to be really weird. Um, all right, let's see if we have to move the Earth to the right a little bit, quite a bit, and we make its uh, radius twice the size of the moon at least. It's actually bigger than that in real life. Um, yeah, the problem once again is the moon um, becomes too small then for labeling because the, the, the label size is gonna is gonna be not good. So the question is can we get images in here? Can we load an image and do something with that? Although I'm, s I'm kind of about to give up on this because it's not really uh, doing what we want. So let's see if over here we have image, which is presumably is supported, but it doesn't actually work. So that's not um, that's not great. So let's see what this is. Um, image and image related functions. Yeah, let's go there. Um, binary version of image. Um, Binary image cube, blur, box matrix, color convert, color negate, closing. I want to just insert it into a graphic if I can. Colorize. Disk matrix, diamond matrix, the dilate dominant colors, image add. Hmm. So is there an image create, maybe? Too much to hope for, really. Image adjust, image color space, image convolve, image, image box, image channels, image data. Um, image import, maybe? Image subtract, image take, image type, opening. Pillow image filter, random image. Um, let's see what that does, actually. Random image sounds kind of interesting. That's not bad, actually. So, let me see what that actually... Is that actually an image? That's not what I wanted, but okay. Random image. So, if I have an image now, can I export the image? Because uh, if I have an image, I can probably do add stuff to it. Image type, sharpen, text recognize, <laughs> threshold, word cloud. Okay, well, this is maybe the only way to create an image. Uh, let's see if there's a way to con uh, convert graphics into an image. I mean, there should be. That should be like the basic way of doing it. But, you know, knowing this thing. So starting here, let's look for the word graphics.
And I'm pretty sure that's not what that did. Image functions. Image. Okay, over here. Now. Oh, damn it, I didn't want to do that. Okay, so I need to remember what page image functions was on. Image. Okay, so page 129. We need to start at page 129. Um... And the next one is, hmm, hang on. Output form. Oh, we're not, we're, I don't think we're inside the image data stuff anymore though. Yeah, I think we, yeah, we left the image. So within the image data stuff, there's literally nothing that talks about graphics or how to convert them to images or anything like that. Um, so we are really getting stuck on this diagram. I do not see a way around it. Um, we could have, now nah, even multiple graphics won't help us here. Um, unfortunately there's no way to overlay graphics on top of each other which would be really useful uh, again Mathematica has all this wonderfulness let's see if there's an overlay function I don't think there is nope the word overlay appears nowhere in here um, so we're kind of hosed I guess um, I mean, another possibility is for us to actually just draw everything and then add in the uh, the numbers, the, the letters later, uh, which is a horrible, horrible idea, uh, which I am nonetheless going to do. So we are going to just uh, just draw in some stuff now. Um, um, let's see. And we can do that using like uh, image magic or or fly or something like that. Um, yeah, and I'm wondering if we could. Yeah, we might we might have to. So screw the letters. Let's go ahead and try to draw our di diagram again. Um, um, let's see. Do I like this as the actual diagram itself? Uh, we need to move the Earth a little bit to the south, I think. Um, I think I'm okay with... it's not great, mind you, it's not even good. So let's see what this does. I'm tempted maybe to go back to what we had before. What we had before was actually pretty bad, so I think I may be okay with... Um, of doing that. Let's see, so the umbral point's gonna be... Uh, we need padding, we need padding. And, and so we can put the text in here, but we'll, we'll fix it later on. Okay. I'm disheartened by how badly this is going. 
I'm also disheartened by the fact that my padding doesn't appear to be working anymore. Um... Oh, actually, this should probably be... No, the lowest y value is EY minus ER minus padding, because the Earth is the lowest. But we're not getting any padding there, are we? Um... So why is that? Let's try a much bigger padding value, see what happens. That looks better. I don't know why, though. Uh, and we will we will go ahead and stretch the image out a little bit to the um, to the east, where the the conal point actually exists. So, um, and really, we could probably even compute the max point by just taking the max of S X M X. EX and the cone point one or something like that. And the min X being pretty much the same thing. Um, and I'm tempted to do that just because we don't really want to keep recalculating these things. So let's do it. Min X is gonna equal the min of Okay, let me make sure we can actually how we how min works on this thing. Okay, good. And if I do this, it should... It might give me the same thing. Yay! Okay, fantastic. So the minimum of the X is going to be the minimum of uh, SX, MX, EX, cone point 1, which is the X value of the cone point. Um, and that's not correct, because SX minus SR, MX minus MR, EX minus ER because each of these will be, will have radii. And then max x is going to be the max of sx plus sr, mx plus mr, ex plus er, and still cone point one is just a point. A min y is going to be the min of sy minus sr, my minus mr, ey minus er, and cone point two. Okay. And the max y is going to be the max of sy plus sr, my plus mr, and ey plus er, and again, once again, cone point two. So the plot range is going to be from min x, max x, and min y, max y. So that should at least make things cleaner when we change numbers. Um, I forgot to add the padding, but that's okay. Uh, that actually at least looks like it's doing what it's supposed to do without padding. And so now we can just say um, min x minus padding, min max x plus padding, min y minus padding, max y plus padding. If this works, I'm going to do a quick save of it, and then we'll continue. Uh, and there we go. That looks actually okay. Not great, mind you, but, but tolerable. Um... So am I happy with this? Um, I wonder if I can make dashed lines. Oh, hang on, I'm going to go ahead and save this as I promised. Now in Mathematica, making dashed lines is really easy. You just say dashed before you want the line. In Mathics, I'm guessing it's impossible. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this back in here. Um, so let's go ahead and draw the line in white that is the that is the, the umbral cone. We can see part of it. Actually, that's not part of it, is it? That's uh, something else. Um, let's go ahead and draw the umbral cone in. Um, and that would be the line from the cone point to... Um, There's a center line, so it's going to be the cone point to S, um, X, da, 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 SX, and then SY plus minus SR. So 
So it'll be the cone point to SX. The value will be the same, SY minus SR. And let's do that in action. If that works, we're going to add a couple more real quick. Uh, and that's the wrong one, but uh, actually I think that's fine. Um, then let's add the other one that goes to the top of the sun. I'm on the top of the sun, looking whatever. Oh, I keep forgetting why is up in this uh, in this world, because in a lot of computer graphics it's the other way around. So, okay, there we are. That is our umbral cone. That is the central line of our umbral, umbral cone is the orange. Two white lines rep represent the umbral cone. Um, the umbral point is where they all meet. And we should probably draw in the sun and the moon's radius as lines because we are going to want to label them. Um, and that I think is pretty easy. That will just show us part of the sun here. Yellow point and then um, line from the center going straight up to SX, SY plus SR. I think if that works, we'll go ahead and do it for the other two and, and the Earth two. Yep, I was so close. All oh right, because line actually requires that you put in the two elements inside of a list itself. So it's a list of lists do this. Okay, fantastic. We have SR there. Um, now we need MR and ER. And I'm thinking ER I want to draw kind of... Um, in fact, all three of them I'm going to draw down because I, I don't want to interfere with the, the, the umbral cone. So we're going to say this is actually going to be SY minus SR. And then for the moon, and just to keep these consistent, I'm going to do this. Uh, red, yellow, circle, point, line that goes from MX, MY to MX, MY minus MR. And then finally blue circle and then in the line that goes from EX EY to EX uh, EY minus ER. Okay. And let's see what that does. But this diagram might get too complicated, but I'm actually not too worried about that. There we go. We have this the, the sun, the point, and in this case I think the point should be on the top left, but we're not gonna actually be labeling our points. Um you, we should probably create points for where the the, uh, the sun and the moon intersect the uh, the umbral cone, a point for the umbral cone itself, and then um, and then a line. Let's see. So these the, we, we're getting some more angles here. This, of course, is the umbral angle right here. This going from here to here to here. God, I wish I had names for these things. That's the umbral angle. The umbral vector, oh, you know, let's see if we can change some of these um, lines into arrows. Um, and I think arrow they do support here. Um, so an arrow, So they look like they have a little bit m more uh, support for an arrow than they do for a line. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and change one of them. If that works, we'll change all of them. And I think we want really this to be the arrow. And let's see what that does. Okay. Um, that is an ugly looking arrow. Let's see what happens if we get rid of our thick directive. I get the feeling terrible things are going to happen now. It's actually not too bad. I actually like that better now. Okay. So there's that arrow, and then there's going to be the... Um, Uh, that 
the center line. I don't think we need arrows for the radii. Uh, we do need an arrow from... Yeah, I wonder if we just have the arrow from here to here. Well, it doesn't really matter, I don't think, because uh, most of the arrow is just a line anyway. So let's see if we can make these... arrows, and I think they're going to be going the wrong way. Yeah, and we actually want them to go the other way, of course. We want them to uh, to converge into um, into, the, into the point. Um, what's interesting here is because we're converging to a point, this is probably going to look really bad. And I think we can use, we can fix it with one of the um, with one of the directives that it actually allows us to uh, make the arrows look better, surprisingly. Okay, so there we go. And yeah, that's that's kind of not what we wanted, but let's see if we can now uh, use the magical arrows property. With arrow that keeps a distance of S from P1 and P2, and then there's one that keeps a distance from and do we have two-headed arrows? Oh, we don't want them, but I'm just wondering if we can get them. Arrow, arrow box, arrow heads. Um, uh, let's see, arrow heads S, the general size of the arrow head. Um, so we have quite a bit of control over arrows compared to lines, which is good. Um, and the arrow heads can even be like little dots and stuff which might be helpful for some. So this is actually fairly powerful in the arrowhead stuff. So let's see if we can uh, uh, let's see if we can um, make these uh, arrowheads look a little bit better. Um, so this is an arrow going from here to here and let's see if we want to keep a distance of 0.2 from let's see what that does. Oh, that's nice actually. And so if we put it like to point Point two. Um, if we could put the arrows here and here, that would look really good. Um, now I'm trying to do this without, you know, keep a distance of one, but I'm gonna at some point have to check to see what the what the distance is. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh no, it doesn't. It it doesn't go all the way through. Oh wow. That's ridiculous. So it's an arrow that doesn't, but I thought just the arrowheads would be moved. So maybe let's not do that. But maybe we can have the arrowheads be offset. It's a big word. Okay, so we're back to having the arrows like this. Uh, and of course we can always draw lines and arrows, but Jesus Christ. Um, arrowheads draws of one arrow. That's the size. Um, zero and the end of the line. Okay, so this is probably what we want. Arrowheads, um, size S, using graphics G. Okay, so I think we can do that sort of generically because of the way this thing works. Arrowheads. Arrowheads, um, this is what we want. Okay. Let me just yank that back. We're not gonna, we're just gonna look at it as our reference. Okay, so arrowheads are gonna be, um, I guess we'll, right now we'll just say size 0.01, and the position is going to be 0.5 which I bet you is going to be the wrong position, but let's take a look. Let's see if that actually does anything. Well, the arrows got a lot smaller. We can fix that. And... I guess we kind of want them closer to... Um, okay, I'm going to try something here. Now, in theory, and this won't work, but in theory, if I change the arrowhead's directive midstream, the other arrows should be drawn in the new way. So this will be like 0 0.5, 0 
This won't work though, because for whatever reason they've decided that they, they don't like to do their lists correctly. Oh wow, that worked. Okay. So it appears they put some work into arrowheads. Okay. So let's see if this, um, for this one here, um, the thing, the important thing about it is that it joins the sun and the moon. So let's see. It's going to be bigger than this. Um, and this one is going to be positioned here and is going to be this size. I kind of like the .01s actually, they think look cute. Um, not bad. Sun so moon being connected, the, um, the umbral cone, and the point of the umbral cone which we probably need to mark. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and mark the umbral cone point in green. And I'm kind of tempted now to make the uh, the uh, radii of the sun and the moon also be uh, also be uh, arrows. So let's do that. I'm a rebel, man. Not Rebel Wilson. I wouldn't mind being Rebel Wilson. She's kind of cute. Um, but I'm not. And I'm not even a rebel, really. So let's see what this does. Okay, so for these arrowheads, we actually want it pointing almost all the way to the radius, not this far back uh, for these. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so this arrowhead's directive is going to come after we draw these, which is fine. And for these, we need arrowheads. We're going to start at um, size 0.03 looks kind of nice. And the uh, position is going to be like 0.9 or something. And now we're just kind of mulling. Yeah, we probably need those arrowheads to be smaller. Quite a bit smaller, actually. Um, how's that? Yeah, it's looking good. Okay, this is, I'm happy with this. Um, so we have the sun's red eye, the moon's red eye. We have that, we have the umbral point. I think I'm going to make the umbral point uh, green. And the more I think about it, this actual vector, this is actually two vectors. One that goes from the sun to the moon, and the other that goes from the moon to the... Oh, no, that's actually not correct. That's uh, to the umbral point. And it doesn't really matter, because this whole thing is the umbral vector here. Um, I mean, uh, up to size. So let's make this green, and then draw an arrow from here to the Earth, the Earth center. So let's see if we can we can wig that. I'm going to get rid of the text. It's just not working for us. Green arrow from cone point to e x e y. We'll leave the uh, arrows the way they were, and I think we need a um, a point at cone point. Um, And we don't need that. Okay, so what this does. Okay, pretty solid. Also, I think that is too big. You know, I think all of the arrowheads are going to be probably this little tiny size that I, that I, well, let's see. And that one probably should be um, terminating pretty close to the, uh, terminating pretty close to the, um, to the earth. So we're going to say the arrowhead size is going to be 0.01 and it's going to terminate really close to the earth. So this diagram, if we get it done today, okay. Okay, fantastic. Um, so now let's see if this is actually represents what we want it to represent. So we have here um, the sun casting a shadow onto the moon this is the um, the green is the umbral point. 
um, this angle going from actually it's either this angle or that angle uh, we need to actually label this point this point this we need to label the uh, the edge points of the uh, of the Sun and the moon uh, of the Sun and the uh, um, and the two planets and even of Earth even though we're not going to necessarily use it for Earth um, and I think for right now we'll just use the same colors that we've been using for the um, for the planet for the uh, circles themselves and I think I'm not going to break this out into like a little bit like this so um, so that's going to be point SY plus SR point SX SY minus SR and if this works well we're, I'm going to check to see that this works first ooh and if it does, we'll do it for the moon and the uh, the moon and the, the Earth as well. Okay. Okay. Good. So if we could actually get a way to label those points, we could start talking about angles and stuff. Um. And then the one other angle I need here is going to be from here to there. That's going to be the um. No, 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 no. Do I need that? No, that's fine. Uh, and then I need to know, yeah, I need to know the extra angle we'll get by by going from here to here. So let me get the two other points, and then we will add... The Earth's being look pretty sad. I might have to change its color to, like, light blue. Uh, it's not bright enough. So hang on, let me go ahead and change the Earth's color to light blue. Let me go ahead and add, and make all of these changes at once. Uh, as though I could, as though I know what I'm doing. Okay, so, um... Point MX, MY plus MR... I wonder if you can do multiple points like that. I'm not going to risk it. MX, MY minus MR, comma, point EX, EY plus ER, da -da, point. And you, won't, you might sort of think that I could actually create functions out of this, which I'm almost tempted to do. Um, instead of doing these all by hand. But again, this is more of a diagram than an actual attempt to do real math. Okay, so there we go. We have those two points, and now we need... Um, uh, the, angle, the, angle we're gonna be, we're, the angle we're going to be looking for here is basically going to be the... Um, yeah, the angle there is going to be... Is this going to cut through the edge of the center of the Earth? It better not. Um... Okay. Well, uh, this is going to be the extra angle we get because the Earth, because the between the orange and green lines, that angle tells us how uh, how far away the Earth's center is from the umbral vector, uh, and we can compare it to the angle between the orange and white lines. But what we need here is the um, the uh, the Earth's uh, width gives us a little bit of extra extra room there. So let's see if we can uh, draw a green line. So we have this, and then we want a line that starts at the cone point and ends at E, X, E, Y, minus E, R. So if that, and that's actually going to be an arrow. And I think it's going to be the same kind of arrow I had before, so I think we're okay in terms of size. Oh, I don't want to share it. Yep, and as always, um, we could add an artificial element at the end so I could end my list with commas without having to worry about it, but, um, you know, Kumsa, Kimsi, or whatever they say, that's not a huge deal. Okay, this looks actually pretty good now. Um, yeah, and the, the problem here is that this... The implication here is that you could make a larger angle if you went tangent to this line. Um, in which case you would have opposite. Yeah, and I'm wondering if that's actually the correct thing to do now. Um, it is, because the, um, the, the this is not... Th this tangent line is going to hit a right angle, just like... Um, That's the right angle there. That's the right angle there. That's not true. 
this is a right angle, this is a right angle. Um, because this line is tangent, this is not a right angle. This is a... Uh, it's very close to being right angle, but it's not really a right angle. Um, I mean, these lines are nearly parallel in real life, um, which is why I can sort of get away with this. And so if my umbral cone were further away, uh, which it would be if the moon were a little bit larger, um, this the di discrepancy here uh, is that um, if this were a tangent line, um, it should actually hit a lot further out, but I'm trying to see if I can actually make it um, correct the way it is. And I think I'm just going to make the moon a little bit bigger to compensate for all of this. And even a small increase in the moon size should have a it should have an effect. And um, yeah, but my Earth is drawn as big as my sun. Wow. So the moon's uh, radius is going to be 0 0.5. And ha <laughs> ha, that is such a ripoff. Um, I'm going to move the earth down a little bit in just a second here, but let's see. Um, see, the thing that bugs, that bugs me here is if this line comes in and is tangent to the earth, at the point that it touches the, um, let's see. At the point that it touch whoa 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 at the point that it touches the earth Yeah, but it still looks like it's that's gonna be the, the perpendicularity is gonna be there, not here. Um and I'm wondering if we should have to compute that. The um the point of perpendicularity which is different. I think I'm just instead going to make... I'm going to move the Earth down a little bit first. Let me move the Earth down a little bit. Just a little bit. Just... I don't even know what that's from. Okay. And I wanted to have the Earth below the uh, the central line to show that it could still... it's still possible for the Earth to be in eclipse even if... even the... even if the edges of the earth aren't even within the center. Um, so I guess what I want to do here is, yeah, do I want to worry about this line not being tangent? Because I think the, um, you know, the focal point could actually be pretty close to the earth though. In fact, it could be inside the earth. So do I need to worry about that? Um, uh, let's see. I mean, the, the issue is that this is going to be a right angle when it touches here. It's always going to be this side's going to be R, and this side's always going to be H. So it's always going to be the arc sign. It just kind of looks funny right now. Um, let's move the Earth a scotch lower. A scotch being, of course, a very technical term, meaning 0 0.05. And I think we might be ready to actually uh, do something with this. And that's no, still a little bit too high. We're moving the scotch, scotch lower. And this is actually only one case still. Uh, this is the case where the uh, center, uh, the central point lies outside of the Earth. There we go. So we now have. Um, okay. So we now have. Yeah, this still doesn't look really, really good. And neither do these two, actually. Well, these two actually look... I mean, the problem is th these lines aren't parallel, but they're very close to being parallel. Um, but in reality, if they weren't parallel, we could just say... Hmm. So if you're, like, this close to the sun... Now, see, this should still be... These lines should still 
Why is that? Oh, it's a share icon. Um, because from here to here, that line should not intersect. I guess it could if the moon were really tiny or something. Yeah, this worries me though because um. Well, I think we can just fight this way. If you're at a point here, the angular width of something uh, that you see that is, uh, you know, in whatever line of vision is going to be the um, the, radi the radius divided by the distance to the center. That would be the opposite over the adjacent. That would be the tangent of it. Uh, opposite over adjacent tangent of it. So if the angular widths are identical, and I guess the only, the only issue there is can the identical, can they be... Um, yeah, I don't think they can be any smaller than that, because even if this line were to come through here, you would still be able to see all the way up to here. So, I think this is okay. And, and I think this is correct. Um, I also think these arrows need to be moved back a little bit now. And they have from here to here, and then another one going all the way to the... Uh, to the umbral point. So this is when the situation that occurs when the Earth is, um, when the umbral point is not inside the Earth. And we could certainly, we could certainly make the moon smaller and bring the umbral point, well, not in this diagram because I moved the Earth too low. Um, but I sort of like this actually. I think this is, um, uh, with the, let's move the white arrows back a little bit though. Um, so those arrowheads we're going to say are going to be size 0.03, but we're going to put them at like over here. I'm really tempted to just make them the same size too. No, I don't want to share it. I'm not into sharing. So let's do this. That's too small, and we want them to move be past the moon, so we're going to restore their size to 0.03, and we're going to move them to like 0.4 along the line. Point four five. Okay, and that looks pretty good to me. So we have the um, the line of oh, and there's two things I wanted to add to my agenda before I forget. Um, one of them I think I already did add, which is. Um, if there's a partial eclipse, a solar eclipse on the moon, that means that part of the moon is slightly darker. But I don't know if we ever counted as anything. We don't seem to have a, a definition of eclipse there. Um, and look more into uh, angle, a straight line cutting uh, into sun and moon if moon is small enough. And that's basically going to be the... Um, the whole issue we get if we make the sun a lot smaller, sorry, the moon a lot smaller, this line can actually cut through the sun, and I'm just worried that that causes uh, an issue that says if you're from here and you're looking at the sun, your angular diameter is somehow smaller because, um, see, I still don't think that's true, though, because um, this part of the sun will still exist and will still appear bright to you, so you would still always measure your angular diameters going all the way over here. Um, and then, so the only question that, well, see, that's still, I don't, that's the thing I need to look into, because I don't fully understand it. Okay, so this is actually a pretty good diagram. I mean, we need to add some uh, labels to it, um, but I'm happy with it. I'm curious to see what this looks like. Give me one second here. I want to see what this image looks like in page info. It is a form of media. Shiny, 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 shiny. Sh it's a large looking F icon. Wow. So this thing that we have isn't even a, um, it's bath jacks. Um, wow, we can zoom in and stuff. Wow. Zoom factor. Math renderer. Wow, we have a lot of choices here. 
Um, so maybe if we did this in SVG, what would happen? It would completely break. So let's go ahead and go back to um, HTML CSS, which is probably better anyway. There we go. And so now, um, yeah, so I think now we're actually in pretty decent shape here. Um, once we get this damn thing to be big enough to start adding labels to it uh, and then s explain what these things match up with in our uh, in our program um, at least for the case where the umbral center uh, the cone of the umbra lies outside of the uh, outside of the target planet okay that'll be the stream for today and probably the last stream for today thank you for watching uh, let's see if there's anyone here that wants to say anything if you are here and want to say anything, please do so. Uh, I don't think there is anyone here. So uh, thank you for watching, and uh, goodbye.